Hi, my name is Alanis with The Culture Project, and today we're talking about what we deserve as women by examining our Mr. Perfect lists. So a little while back, my friend consoled me by saying, Alanis, even in my humanity, I can see all that you're worthy of in a future spouse. If I know this in my woundedness, imagine all that our Lord has prepared for you in your vocation. Whoa. So as Christians, that's a disposition that we should maintain when approaching every relationship. Like we should expect much from the men in our lives because we understand the dignity that we've been given as daughters and the call that we each have to uphold this. So naturally in my humanity, I ran to the chapel and I wrote this lengthy list of all the things that I wanted in a man. And from that day forward, I approached every man I met through the lens of that checklist. Not the best, right? Because the issue with that is men are so much more than just a strike through or a check mark off of my list of ideals in a husband. Like, if I desire to be seen with the dignity that I have, I must also see men in that same light rather than just this preconceived expectation of who he should be. So, is having that checklist innately bad? No, but I'd argue that we should be focusing more on a universal list that every Christian should have for their significant other. So I'll make all of our lives easier by creating that list for us. So number one, a natural respect and obedience towards our boundaries, right? They shouldn't just respect them. They should be protecting them. Two, strength in their faith. Three, seeing and treating us as the gifts that we are. Four, a continual call for us to be holier too. And five, an understanding of the virtue of chastity and a true call and stride to live it out. Okay, so that's our universal non-negotiable list, but knowing us as women, I know it can be tempting to create another list of our preferables with things like facial hair and funny, which again, not inherently bad to desire those things, but we have to realize that it would still be possible to in fact date someone who doesn't have either of those traits and yet still continue to lead each other to holiness, okay? So for example, one of my own personal preferences is the quality of timeliness, you know? I just value promptness with my whole heart, but where non-negotiables and preferables differ is that it just means there could be room for each of us to grow, right? I can grow in patience, he can grow in discipline. So here's a quick examination that you can take with you as you create your own list of preferables. So one, why is it important to you that they possess this trait? Two, is your desire for this trait pure of heart? Or maybe is the Lord asking you to grow in something? And finally, are you viewing men who don't possess these traits as less than? Okay, now that we've got our checklist covered, as you're praying through these, I just wanna remind you that you're not picky, you're not asking for too much, you're not crazy because this is what you're worthy of. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and check out our website at thecultureproject.org for more content like this.